you for watching today. God has a plan and a purpose for you. I hope this message encourages you to love God and your fellow man even more. In this series, I've been asking you to fill out a missing person report on the true Messiah of the New Testament. And the whole point in this exercise is to ask yourself, how many differences between Jesus Christ and the true Messiah are you willing to accept? We've already established that Jesus Christ and the true Messiah have two different names. The true Messiah's name is Yeshua. We've also looked at the birthday and found out that there is little chance that the true Messiah's birthday could or even would have been on December 25th, and most likely that his birthday is in September. We have also established that the goals of Jesus and the true Messiah are totally different. Jesus came to set us free from the Torah, and Yeshua came to make it easier for us to follow the Torah. Finally, we see that Jesus came to set up a different day called the Lord's Day, Sunday, instead of Sabbath. Yeshua followed and enjoyed Sabbath as God intended. The whole point in Satan having an imposter messiah is that you can't tell the difference. This seems rather unfair and in fact a friend of mine recently told me that he could never believe that the false messiah can so closely resemble the real messiah. He told me that God would never allow this to happen. Again, isn't this the point of an imposter, a counterfeit? Isn't the point to make it look like the real thing and pass it off as if it was the original? We can see this in a story about counterfeiting money. Tarshima Bryce hardly ranks among the world's elite counterfeiters, but with the help of modern consumer technology, she developed an exacting system for crafting fake US bills. First, the 34-year-old hairstylist and janitor took $5 bills and soaked them with Purple Power degreaser. Next, she scrubbed off the ink with a toothbrush. After drying the now blank notes with a hairdryer, she fed them through an inkjet printer that emblazoned them with scanned images of 50 or $100 bills. The counterfeits looked and felt real and could pass any test by a retail clerk. Bryce, who pleaded guilty to counterfeiting in federal court, admits she produced between 10,000 and 20,000 in fake bills over two years before her scam unraveled. It is interesting how Miss Bryce used part of the real thing, a real $5 bill, and she created a counterfeit by printing new information on top of the original. There was some truth behind her counterfeit. If someone asked her if this is real money, she can honestly say yes. We must look at the identifying characteristics very, very closely to tell the difference between the fake and the real. Today we are looking at what laws the Messiah of the New Testament expected us as Gentiles and Jews to follow. Let me put a little mind bender your way. Who was on top of the mountain writing the Ten Commandments with his own finger? Was it the Holy Spirit? Yes. Was it Yeshua the Messiah of the New Testament? Yes. If Yeshua is God, then I can just as easily say that it was Yeshua writing the Ten Commandments as I could say that God wrote the Ten Commandments. They are one and the same. Let's look at what Yeshua our God said in the Old Testament about His Torah, His ways, and if they apply to us as Gentiles. Let's see if God our Father has anything to say about Gentiles following His ways and if they still apply to us today. Starting in Numbers 15:15, 15, 15, the community is to have the same rules for you and for the aliens or the Gentiles living among you. This is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. You and the aliens shall be the same before the Lord. The same laws and regulations will apply to you both, you and to the alien living among you. So when it comes to God's commands, He expects both the nation of Israel and anyone trying to join themselves to the nation of Israel or anyone who happened to be living inside the nation of Israel should all obey the same rules. You might respond by saying, well, I'm not really trying to be a part of the nation of Israel. I'm a Gentile and I will always be a Gentile. This attitude would fly in the face of what Paul believed in Romans 11:13. I am talking to you Gentiles Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, if some of the branches have been broken off and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishment sap from the olive root, which is the nation of Israel. Paul makes the case that we are not a separate entity from the nation of Israel, but rather we are joined in as a graft into the nation of Israel. We are one tree, and it is the nation of Israel who is the trunk of that tree. So if you are not trying to become part of the nation of Israel, you are not a part of the correct tree. 
I think the question at this moment is this, whose tree are you trying to become a part of, Yeshua's or Jesus Christ? Now that we've established that we are a part of the nation of Israel, what does God expect from us? Isaiah 56 says this, And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be His servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my commandments, my commands, my Torah, my laws, my ways, my teachings, these I will bring to the holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. But Chad, I have always been taught that we are under the new covenant. We are not under the old covenant and under the old laws. Aren't the Gentiles and the modern Jews under a new set of laws? Let's look at Jeremiah and see what this new covenant is all about. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. Did you notice who the new covenant was with? Was it with the Gentiles? No. It was with the nation of Israel and the people of Judah. Now what does God want from this new covenant? What is the goal for the new covenant? Let's read on in verse 33. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law, or we can also say the Torah, my teachings, my ways, my regulations in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. See, God is tired of the laws being on stones and paper because they do us little good. The laws of God are useless until they are written on people's hearts and minds. This is what God says, I will put my law, my Torah on their minds and on their hearts. It is only then that the law can make a difference. It is then that the Torah, God's teachings, can make an impact on a person's life. To many people's surprise, the New Testament says the exact same thing. Hebrews says this, But in fact, the ministry Yeshua has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one, since the new covenant is established on better promises. For if there had been nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. And then the writer of Hebrew repeats Jeremiah word for word. Hebrew repeats the fact that God wants his laws written down on the heart and not stuck on paper and stone. Then Hebrew ends it with this in verse 13. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. What is obsolete and outdated? It is where the laws are located. God wants the same Torah of the Old Testament on your heart, not on stone and paper. Why is this lesson so important? If you understand what laws Yeshua follows, then your life is about to change. The whole role of Yeshua is to change the location of the Torah from stone and paper and put it on people's hearts, to put it on your heart. Yeshua wants God's will written on your heart so you will know the best way to do things in any situation. At this point, we both know this conversation is not about facts or knowledge or Bible debate. It is about who we love. Are you so in love with Jesus Christ that you refuse to see that He has different laws and different standards than the true Messiah of the New Testament? Are you so in love with Jesus Christ that you choose to overlook the fact that He opposes God Himself? Are you so in love with Jesus Christ that you won't accept that He represents a different set of moral values? If you are still hesitant, here's a quick story. Fifteen college-age students who were traveling in a van were hit by a semi-truck and five students instantly died. Two of the girls on the van looked very similar. One of them died and the other was injured so badly her face was unrecognizable. The accident made it easy for the authorities to switch their identities. Whitney Keurig was identified as one of the dead Laura Van Wren. Whitney lay in a hospital surrounded by Laura's loving family as Whitney's real family planned and attended her funeral. Five weeks later, Laura's family began to have questions. One of the first things the family noticed was that Whitney's teeth were different than they had remembered. This one identifier set off a family investigation that soon ended with the realization that they had been caring for the wrong child. Even though the truth was excruciating, Laura's family immediately informed Whitney's family of the mistake. Isn't this the same reality that we are facing with Jesus Christ? Even though He is becoming more and more unrecognizable, we must be brave enough to admit that Jesus Christ is an imposter and that the true Messiah, Yeshua, 
is waiting for our return to Him. What is standing in your way from fully accepting the true Messiah of the New Testament? Is it your traditions? Is it peer pressure? What is it that's keeping you from accepting the New Testament Messiah that always directs people to the God of the Old Testament? Remember, John 14 says this, Yeshua replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teachings. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. I encourage you, don't let anything stand between you and the blessings that God has for you. Don't let a false Messiah pull you away from the one true God of our Bible. Be willing to let go of anything so that you can latch on to the truth of God's words and commands. With all of this, you have a choice to make. Have you chosen the true Messiah of the New Testament? I hope this series has been enough to help you make a definitive decision. But if you have any further questions, please contact me on my website at chagleaves.com. To get this entire series on DVD for your home or to give to a friend, be sure to visit my website chagleaves.com to purchase this today.